Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. MacBook Air or MacBook Pro? Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're taking a look at these two MacBooks here. This is a 2020 MacBook Air, this is a 2020 MacBook Pro, and I'm trying to really figure out which one of these I want to keep. We'll go over the specs in just a minute, but basically this is a 2020 MacBook Air, this is an M1, and this is the 2020 MacBook Pro, just before the M1 series, so it is an Intel still. And I've been using this one as my personal laptop for a while now and really love it but I stumbled upon this one here and I'm trying to figure out which one I want to keep which one I want to get rid of and really I'm gonna ask you guys to help me out with that so we're gonna look at some of the similarities some of the differences we're gonna look at some benchmarks and we're gonna look at some physical aspects of them and hopefully you guys can help me out in the comments below and let me know if it was you which one would you keep so let's go ahead and start off by taking a look at the exact specs of both of these. All right, starting off with the MacBook Air. So this is obviously a 2020 MacBook Air. This is an M1 model. And the good and the bad thing about the Apple Silicone is that it makes it super easy to understand uh, the performance. That's the good side of the M1, knowing that this M1 processor is gonna be the same as an M1 processor in a MacBook Pro, same as one in an iMac, of course, there are some performance differences based upon the power available to it, but just basically you understand that the architecture is going to be the same. And this comes in two varieties, the 8 gig and the 16 gig. Unfortunately, this is the 8 gig, but I've never had a problem with 8 gig model of an M1 computer. I've had some minis, I've had uh, the MacBook Airs, and they've all performed just fine. And this particular model has a 250 gigabyte SSD. So those three things right there pretty much tell you everything you need to know about the specs. An M1 with 8 gigs of RAM and 256 or 250 gigabytes of SSD, that pretty much paints the picture. As far as the physical aspects go, it's a 13.3 inch Retina display. It's got two USB-C ports on the left hand side here. And then on the right hand side, we've got just the headphone jack. And that's about it. You're supposed to get about 15 hours of web browsing on the battery. It's nice and light and portable, and it's a great bang for the buck. This particular model with the upgraded hard drive would have been about $1,000 brand new. I never buy laptops brand new, but if you had just to compare apples to apples, then this would be a $1,000 laptop at launch. Is the extra 120 gigs of hard drive worth the extra $200 from the base model? Absolutely not, but I lucked out and this one already had the slightly upgraded hard drive, so I'll take it. So let's take a look at the MacBook Pro next. All right, and here we go with the 13 inch 2020 MacBook Pro. And in 2020, they actually had three different models of MacBook Pro in the spring. They released two different models, kind of an entry level model and then a more advanced level. Uh, they call it simply the, the two Thunderbolt ports and the four Thunderbolt ports model. So this one luckily is the four Thunderbolt ports, which means it's got obviously four Thunderbolt ports and it's got the touch bar up here and it's got much faster processors and it was quite a bit more expensive. So this particular model, after we look at the specs, um, we'll see that this was a about $1,799 model. So approximately $1,800. Uh, the intro model with just the two USB-C ports on it was more like $1,299 or so uh, with uh, a less powerful CPU. So this one has the quad-core 2 gigahertz i5. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM and uh, 500 gigabyte SSD. Now I said there was three models that came out in 2020 and after the spring, after the two models that came out in the spring, the uh, fall event they had the M1 processor. So the M1 came out and it was considerably cheaper than this particular model. And I'm sure if I had bought this in the spring and the fall they came out with an M1 model, I would be pretty upset. But that kind of reiterates why I don't buy brand new laptops. I wait until they're broken in and I find them on the used market. So quad core i5, 16 gigs of RAM, 500 gigabytes hard drive, MacBook Pro versus MacBook Air, and if this was three years ago, I would have sworn up and down that this would be the better buy. But now with the inclusion of the M1 processor and of course the M2 and M3 and whatever else they're going to come out with, 
then you have to really think about this. All right, so now we understand what the two models are. We basically have very similar laptops, very similar screens, very similar in size. They're almost identical in size except for the uh, MacBook Air kind of tapers down at this edge as opposed to being more or less flat over the whole area. This one's going to be a tiny bit lighter if portability is the most important thing for you. But then we have to look at the performance. So I ran benchmarks on all these. I ran four different benchmarks. One was a GPU, kind of a, a gaming type test. One was all CPU, which was the Cinebench. And then I ran Geekbench, which kind of goes through just the, we just went through the, the CPU side on these. And the last one was the Blackmagic disk speed test. Now I could throw a bunch of numbers all over the screen here and impress you um, because I've got all those numbers, but I'm just going to make it real easy and say the M1 destroyed the i5 in every test except for one, and that was the write speed test. The Blackmagic does both the write speed and the read speed, and the write speed test on this MacBook Pro was a little bit faster than the MacBook Air. The read speed was faster on the MacBook Air, or they're very similar between the two. But as far as the GPU goes, the M1 destroyed the Intel um, Iris graphics. And as far as the single core and multi-core speeds, the M1, of course, destroyed the i5 processor. Now, with all that being said, is this a slow computer and this a fast computer? Absolutely not. Benchmarks are benchmarks. The best way to know how well something runs is just to use it and I've used both, and I have no problem using either one of them. For everyday tasks, you're gonna see very similar performance between the two. It's only if you're crunching numbers with a benchmark or taking a stopwatch to some kind of rendering or video editing or something like that, then you'll see the M1 is gonna take the lead on that. But if you're just browsing the web, watching videos, uh, just general tasks, then you're not gonna see a difference between the two. Now, I'll have to say I was somewhat impressed with the video test on the uh, GPU of the M1. It was doing 60 frames per second on the GPU test that I did. This one, I was actually impressed too. It was, it was pulling the same test, was pulling 40 frames per second, even though this is by no means ever supposed to be a game playing machine. It at least did perform somewhat well with those Iris graphics. So it's all out there now. We know the differences, we know the similarities. We know the performance differences, and you can see why I've kind of got a, a problem of kind of making a decision. My heart says, MacBook Pro, 16 gigs of RAM, bigger hard drive, this is definitely the way to go. But I've been absolutely loving this M1 MacBook Air. And if I fill up the hard drive, I'll just get a little USB-C thumb drive or USB-C portable SSD, and you've got unlimited storage at that point. So I've presented my case to the jury, that's you guys, and now it's your turn to help me out. Let me know down in the comments. Just give me a, a quick little sentence, which one you like and why. Now as much as I'd love to keep both of them, it's just not practical. They're very similar, they're, they're too similar to keep both, so I'm going to keep one of them and I'm going to let the other one go. But that's going to wrap it up for this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me that thumbs up if you want to see more check out the channel, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to go leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think between the two of them, Air or Pro. But I thank you as always for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.